Lift me and my body up with butter and take me to the Freaker's Bow. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. This is the Freaker's Bow. We are live right now, right here on RealLibertyMedia.com on this Friday, April 12, 2019. And uh, glad to have you all here with us, RealLibertyMedia.com. Absolutely. Let's see, I got, a, I got, a, I got a thing here. Oh, I, I see it's. It's something else. Never mind. Uh, all right. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, man, uh, man, man, women, all y'all um, out there in Radio Land, uh, RLM Radio Land, RLM Radio dot X Y Z. If you're on Freedoms Network dot com, Real Liberty dot org. Oh, who knows where y'all might be uh, listening on the RLM Radio? Welcome to you. But if you're here on the video stream, uh, whether that's on Real Liberty Media dot com on the Freakers Ball Show page or on Vaughn.live slash Real Liberty Media. Welcome to you as well. And hopefully you'll be here in the chat with us, regardless of where you're listening from. Uh, you know, because uh, we, we like people here in the chat. They, 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 they chat with us and they tell us things about the show and, and what they're doing and, and what kind of things they're liking or not liking or just general chat, whatever. So, uh, yeah, howdy to y'all. So, uh, uh, Moose Girl, I'm sure we'll call in momentarily, and then we'll talk to her. But until then, let's say hi to the folks over here in the chat on RealLibertyMedia.com. We got the barman, the mighty barman, Mr. Beetle sitting up on top there, Cowboy Tech and myself, and the mighty Moose Girl. We got Miss Kate with a little dot there in the chat. We got DC and Asmo and Miss Beth Z. Charles Zadoni, uh, Echelon, I, B, D, C. Uh, Java Doctor, Mr. Meister Brow, Mr. Ponder Gander, who did his show earlier today. Uh, yeah, it was interesting. It was a replay from 2013, but uh, interesting stuff. Uh, we got Miss Rain. We got Mr. Rob Works. We got Mr. Romes. Mr. Crypto himself. We got the Vanna White and Weathered Orc Bot sitting in here doing their jobs as they do. We got the Phantom and End and Well Then and Well Then. Benoit, hey Ben, how you doing? We got Colfax and Cyborg Noodle Dakota Flash, somebody. Uh, Mr. Frumpy, we got the Gromit and JJ's from Scotland. Kozu and the Karl Marx weirdo bot. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that bot. He's a weirdo. And we got Kiss and Pone Sauce and Sock Puppet and Salamo, uh, a new, a new uh, Canuck boy, I do believe, uh, for us. Uh, Canuck, I think he's Canuck. Anyway, we got Miss Van Meter. Yes, the lovely Van Meter and Vin E. Cuss. Hey, Cuss, what's up, dude? All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with the moose there. She hasn't called. Let me try and call her. See if that works. We'll try and give the moose a call on the freakers. Oh, here she is calling before I had a chance. There we go. Any moment. And click. There we go. Hola. Hola, Miss Moose. How are you this evening? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine, too. Yeah, yeah. A little on, good. The, little on the chilly side, but other than that, doing just fine. Oh, uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> <That's pretty good. laughs> we got that in common. Yeah, it's snowing on me and crap out there. It's snowing a little bit here, but it's just annoying oh, at this point. It's it, flurries, it, really, but yeah. it's like, are you kidding me? Uh, the, Seriously, the, the snow was all gone completely. Yeah, the, the snow here was not even enough to talk about. It just happened to happen when I happened to be outside working in the yard. It decided. But just uh, finish going through the list, if you must. And uh, Oh, I did. <laughs> I, I did. I got them all. Oh, you did? Oh, I'm pretty okay. sure I got them all. I don't know. If right. I if if I missed anybody, it wasn't an intentional slight. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, I was out there yesterday. Was it? I think yesterday, yeah. And it was decent. It was decent weather out there. I mean, you know, yeah. mid fifties or something like that. And then um, working away, and, and then all of a sudden, the, I could feel it. The temperature just dropped like a rock. And, uh -huh. and I said, "Oh, well, that's kind of cold." I kept on going along there, and suddenly I was being covered in snow. <laughs> I was like, where the hell did that come from? It was Seriously, <laughs> dude, the it, the snow was completely gone here. It's like the tile, I could put Jackson on the tile. 
you know, yeah, yeah. going out there on Monday, basking in the sun. It was 60 degrees out. And now yeah. this, it's like, are you kidding me? And then my chill veins on my hands, that affliction that I have, has not gotten better. I mean, I did buy gloves, and I put coconut oil on there, and I put this other stuff on there, and it helped a little bit, but... Yeah. It's just like, this is ridiculous. Uh, you know, winter, winter's trying to hang on as best as it can, but it's going to be right. beat real quick here. I hope so. It better be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go insane. <laughs> Not that I'm not already. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just a little bit insane, though. Just well, you have to be a little bit insane just to live in this climate. You you're, know, you're you're a good insane, though. No, that's different. <laughs> well, that's good to know. That's good. To know. Yeah. So anyway, we had some excitement at our Walmart last uh, Wednesday night. All right. Mother and son arrested after chaos. Ensues in Eau Claire Walmart. And, and it wasn't you, so. It was not me and my, one of my sons. No, it was not. <laughs> All right. No, I would not cause a disturbance at the Eau Claire Walmart. All right, so. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying it could never happen. But, but not this time. Not to this extent. Not okay, this so here you go. time. All right, let's take a look here. This is uh, Eau Claire, April 11th. Shortly before. 8.30 Wednesday, officers were called to Walmart for a retail theft in progress. They were told a female and her dog had shoplifted items from the store. Her dog? <laughs> yes, her dog. Okay. When officers arrived at Walmart, they found the female, Lisa Smith, 46, screaming in the entryway and trying to catch her dog, Bo. Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me the picture of this woman right here that I'm looking yes. at yes, is 46? <laughs> That's what they said. She looks 46. like 70 or something. Yes, that's, she that's does a, look older that, than that's that. A, that's a rough-looking woman. Anyway, uh, they also learned that her son, Benny, Benny Van, 25, was in the store causing prob other problems. In trying to figure out what happened, officers learned Smith had come into Walmart with her unleashed dog, Bo. While Bull ran up to customers, Smithy radically started pulling apart store displays and placing them in her cart. She, yeah, it was meth. Meth. She, I, that was my guess. It was meth. She was asked to leave by staff to, and left the store to perform karate moves in the parking lot. <laughs> Ninja mom. In the meantime, Bull, the dog, got a box of Jiffy Corn Bread Muffin Mix and tried to leave the store. <laughs> Oh, jeez. She was arrested and fought with officers. She also attempted to kick out a window on the squad car. While this was occurring, Van, the son, had made his way to the back of the store and removed all his clothing, exposing himself to other customers. Van retrieved new clothing from the racks but did not purchase these items. When officers approached Van, he refused to stop and attempted to run over an officer with his scooter. <laughs> so he's naked and riding a scooter. Oh boy! Well, oh, I thought you said he put. That it was that that I do not look like that woman. No, no, I do not. no, 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 that, no. That. I do not. In fact, I look younger than that, that woman, and I'm older than that fucking. No, woman. No, no, I think so, he's agreeing with there you. you. Go. He, he's agreeing that anyway, was meth. What? He's agreeing with you that that was meth. Yes, but he said it was moose. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was but, moose. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. I'm like, don't be trying to think that. No, 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 no. This was not. Me. But anyway. Um, <laughs> So when officers try to approach Van, he attempted to run over an officer with his scooters. His scooter officers physically stopped the scooter and arrested Van. Smith was arrested for disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, mis misdemeanor bail jumping. Van was arrested for lewd and lascivious behavior, disorderly conduct, and retail theft. Bo was caught by officers in the store and brought to the Humane Association. The dog was not charged. <laughs> <laughs> the police issued him a warning for the theft. <laughs> Well, I'm glad oh, they didn't. Yeah, I almost went to Walmart that night too. <laughs> yeah, you could have you could have seen it live. You could have seen that firsthand. Wow. Oh my God. I mean, they had to have been on meth or something. Oh, something. I mean, look at that woman. She's she's definitely. Oh yeah, you can tell. She's uh, a that's a, that's a tough forty six years for anybody. Yeah, uh, that is. She's saying, road man. hard, put away wet, dude. Yeah, and I I yeah, don't know who it is. She's had the life. I don't know who's yeah. doing that writing, but I I feel bad for the guy. <laughs> yeah, maybe she looked better down the time, you know. Oh well, I'm sure she did. I mean, twenty five you know. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well. Uh, but uh, anyway, that was some excitement here in Eau Claire at the Walmart, don't you know? 
Well, I wish the best for them. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe it's a wake-up call they need or something. Who knows? Maybe karate moves yeah. in the parking lot. That's yeah. classic. That's yeah. fucking okay, then. Ninja mom. <laughs> yeah, something. Anyway, um, oh, another article. Just going to share. It's from B719. All right. That coconut oil is better than DEET at repelling insects, compelling new research so shows. That's, that, that doesn't surprise me. No, so don't be going out and buying this poison shit when you can use natural stuff to do the same thing. Right. And people wonder why we have disease and cancer and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's because we've been, ex not only are we being exposed to, like, toxins on a daily basis, but some people do the vaccines, and some people do the Roundup, and some people do the fucking DEET products, you know, and then yeah. they, they dye their hair with toxic shit, and they wonder why they end up sick with cancer. Yeah. It's like, I can tell you part of it. I can tell you part of the reason you ended up sick, because you've been using toxic shit. Right. In your house, or wherever. Like Febreze? No. I do not use that crap. There's a reason for that. No, but you can make you, make, you can make you you can make your own uh, Febreze really easy with no no toxic shit in it. No toxic shit, right? Yeah. But people just trust the FDA blindly and just say, "Oh well, if it's on the market, it's safe," and blah blah blah. <laughs> you know, the vaccines are approved by the FDA, so those can't be bad. The government wouldn't do that to us purposely. They wouldn't make approve bad things for us. Oh Bullshit. no, of course not. Of course not. Bullshit. <laughs> and, that, and we're just talking the things that we they make us seem like we have a choice about. Yeah. Like yeah. the vaccines right now. I don't know if you guys are watching what's going on in New York City, but um, I tell you what, really I wouldn't no. be getting no fucking mandatory vaccine. Oh, hell no. Oh, yeah, I heard I'd about that. I'd be leaving the there. fucking city. About I'd be the, the fuck you. I'm not getting no, you know, or not even leaving. I'd be like, I ain't doing it. All right, that measles crap. That, well, they what figure, are you going to do with, with me? What are you going to do with me? They're going to charge you a thousand dollars a day for every day you don't. Uh... Oh, really? Yeah. I'd be well, like, that's fuck what you, I heard. Leaving, yeah. then. Fuck you. Yeah. So anyway, back to the article. DEET is currently uh, considered the gold standard when it comes to insect repellents, known for being long-lasting and highly effective. Yes, it has a host of concerning side effects. Many people take on the risk in hopes of avo avoiding. Serious See, this is the problem. Many people take on the risk in hope of avoiding serious mosquito flea and tick-borne illnesses. What? Anyway, soon, however, people may not have to wipe this type of lesser of two evils, have to make this, have to face this type of lesser of two evils choice, as promising new research shows that a compound in coconut oil actually works better, even better than DEET when it comes to repelling insects. So anyway, um, there's that article. And just seriously, it's all up to you. Every choice that you make is up to you. Well, let's hope. I mean, so. even if they tell you, <laughs> you know, oh, I got to fucking, you got to get this vaccine shot because, you know, it's mandatory now. Right. Uh, I'd be like, no, I'm going to go. Yeah. Uh, I'm good. Th thanks anyway, guys, but no. Yeah. Just thank you anyway, but no thank you. <laughs> and so, oh, you know... I, I understand ignorance to a point, but that only goes so far. If yeah. you're ignorantly and blindly just trusting the FDA and this government and something, it, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know, because they're not trustworthy. <laughs> I think I think I understand. They are not trustworthy. What? I think I understand Ben's point, but I think he's wrong. He says just rub Roundup all over yourself, <laughs> uh, which I don't think Roundup kills bugs, but uh, you know, maybe maybe some malathion. No, it's a pesticide. No, no, it's it's, a, it's a herbicide. Roundup is an herbicide. Oh, herb yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah, uh, but you know, you put, right. put, put, put just yeah. just 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 take a bath in malathion. You'll be good to go. Right. Well, you know, it'll you be won't, fine. You won't be alive, but the bugs won't bother you. And see, you know, I mean. <laughs> People expose themselves to can we're, we're being daily bombarded by it, by toxic crap right, in the right, air, right. in the air, sure. and in the water. And so you have to do your best to combat yourself. I mean, we we talk about this stuff all the time. We've been talking about this stuff since 
we started doing the Freakers Ball. Yes, we have. I want to have a sauna in my backyard. That's going to be like a goal of mine. I want a portable, I'm going to build a mobile fucking sauna, <laughs> and I need to have something oh, so God. I can... Saunas are very useful for getting toxins out of your body, toxins out of your system. Yeah. Oh, well, you better tell me you're joking there, Ben, because uh, if if you if you rub Roundup on yourself all the time, he's being sarcastic. He's <laughs> fucking around. He should be. I don't know. Maybe he. Yeah, does. that's what I say. You never know, man. You never know. You don't know. You can't tell sometimes and like typed words in a chat room. Uh, he's being sarcastic. He, you just can't tell. You don't know sometimes. You can't always tell by spoken words either. Exactly. But, you uh, can't. No, I think Ben knows better than that. <laughs> right, I would. Hope. But anyway, oh, um, yeah, it's just uh, it's it, it's up to you. You know, who who do you trust? I mean, if you trust the yeah, the, the government, right? And you're asking for trouble. No one, doubt about that. You're going to be let down. For one thing, you're going to be highly disappointed. Oh, yeah. But if you put high expectations and thinking the government's good or it's going to get better or this and that, or I'm right, you're right, left and right, blah, 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 then you're going to get disappointed. You're going to be pissed off. You're going to be disappointed. And why do you want that? Why would you want that? Absolutely. Why would you want to be pissed off and disappointed? So the key to me is do not put a lot of expectations into government. Don't you know lower your expectations when it comes to government because they sure don't care about you. They act like they do. Oh yeah, New York City, we're, we're, we're mandatory vaccinations because we're for your protection. It's like, you know, really? It isn't. No, it's not for my protection. Dude. All right. No, it's, it's all about control. Yes, yeah, and it, it, I know I know it sucks. I know it fucking really sucks. Right, right. That it's that it's the way that they are like that because they they don't have to be like that. It doesn't have to oh, be like it is. Obviously, yeah. But it is <laughs> how it is. Exactly. I mean, I know it sucks. It's disappointing. Hey, well, it's a bummer. You know, you, you, all all everything that you've been taught your whole life, or everything you know, freedom and this and that, it just goes right out the fucking window. Sure. You know, and it's just it, it's it's depressing. It can be. Right. At yeah. the same time, it can be freeing because you, you you this is what we talk about when we say wake up. Wake the hell up already. Wake up. Realize it. And don't fucking bitch at anybody else about it. Don't fucking sit there and go, blah, 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 this yeah. and that. Oh, yeah, what about this? What about that? You could do that all day long. Sure, sure. You know, it's a choice that you make yeah. for yourself. It's an individual choice. Right. Do you want to be ignorant or you don't, do you not want to be? Let's hope you don't want to be. Let's hope. Yeah. All right, Moose, we're going to kick off some jams here. Get do this, that. Get, it's time. Get this show a rolling. Yeah, man. As we do. As we do. <laughs> this uh, is a guy from, uh, well, Delaware, I do believe. Mr. George Thur Mr. George Thurgood. All right, very nice, very nice. Mandolin Orange doing Missouri Borderland, apparently a Joe Newberry cover, whoever Joe Newberry is. <laughs> anyway, before that, we had Rob Zombie covering uh, the Blitzkrieg Bop, a tribute to the Ramones there from Mr. Rob Zombie. Excellent version, too. And we kicked it off with the good old rock and roll boogie woogie blues band of George Thorogood and the Delaware Destroyers doing... It ain't me. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> although, although, although the title on the video I listed here on YouTube is "Let the Good Times Roll," that's not the song. <laughs> oh man! So uh, yeah, fun, 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 good stuff. All right. So um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so at work they decided to have Fry Friday. Fry Friday. 
And so they brought in like a hot plate to make into to use for a fryer, you know, put oil in a pan or whatever. Right. And they brought in one of those Presto like two basket ones. Okay. And so they decided to fry up all this stuff today, and I was, like, seriously closest to the thing, but it permeated through the whole office area. Right. And I seriously got physically ill from it. I did. I, I came I, home, I was sick. It makes sense. Sick yeah, no, I, 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 I get it. I get it. I was sick, dude. And you know what? I hope they don't do that again. Like, everything I was wearing reeked like this grease, this oil. Yeah. And it's just like, it may, I didn't think I would be affected that way, but my stomach hurt really bad. Uh-huh. Like, it was bad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I feel better now, but um, that was terrible. And it's, then they're like, well, it'll be aired out by Monday. I don't think it's going to be aired out by Monday. Do yeah, that stuff sticks, you know. Yeah, it's not going to be aired out by fucking Monday. I mean, I don't know if they've ever done this before. Yeah. Or whose idea it was. See, but when you go to a restaurant and they have a fryer, they have an exhaust system. Absolutely. You know, you can't just... This is why I don't have a fryer at my home. I do not like that smell. I don't want that smell in my house. I I, I have a little fryer, but I hardly ever use it. But when I do use it, mm-hmm. I, I set it on top of the stove and I turn the exhaust fan on. Right. Good idea. Right. But in our office, we don't have no exhaust fan there. No, you wouldn't. Right. It was bad. It, I, I don't know if anyone else got sick, but like I said, I was like the closest one to the frying. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, well, not, I wasn't right next to it, but, you know, right. I was the closest cubicle to the fryer. Yeah. And it made me physically ill. I, I was really surprised by that reaction. That's I, never happened to me before. From yeah, that. I'm, I'm not really too surprised by that. Um, yeah, like you said, it might it's probably canola oil. Yeah, something nasty. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it was store bought oil. It was I don't know if it was vegetable. I didn't look to see what kind of oil it was, but it smelled gross. It, well, I'll bet it, it, it smelled I'll totally bet gross, it dude. Did. Um. Yeah. Oh my like, god! Sounds, it's like don't ever do that again. Yeah, sounds sounds pretty horrible. Like all those clothes that I was wearing, I have to wash them now. I mean, well, obviously I'm gonna wash my clothes, but my my winter jacket I was wearing, it just reeks, dude. Right, right. It just reeks. I mean, that was freaking terrible. I bet. I bet it was. It's like I hope they don't. I mean, you know, a couple of weeks ago we had a potluck. It was great, you know, because some lady was leaving the job or whatever. Yeah. And that was really good, but this frying idea was not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Gross. Holy crap. Well, they'll be, maybe, right. hopefully they'll learn from that and not do it again. Right. If yeah. they ever talk about it, I'll be like, please don't. Yeah. Well, I'm taking that day off. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to not be here that day because it made me physically ill. Like, I didn't tell anybody that. I don't know. Maybe I should, you know, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I don't know. Well, just wait, anything, you know, but... if, if they ever announce they're going to do it again, just say, just tell whoever. Uh, you can't, can't be, be there. That yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, because it made me ill. I mean, you know, I normally what, what, what have uh, uh, what, 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 what It was just weird. What, what kind of really foods? Weird. What kind of foods were they frying? Like shrimp and corn dogs and mushrooms and onions and zucchini and chicken wings and all this kind of stuff, all different stuff, dude. Right. And it was just like and the food wow. sounds fine, you know, but uh, right. Yeah, I don't know. These curds, but still, it was like that oil, man, that grease, that smell made me ill. Yeah, gross. Yeah, it did. It was gross. So, so anyway, anyway, so I'm anyway, glad I'm doing okay. Yeah, what? I'm, I'm glad you're. Uh... It was like a food poisoning reaction. Oh, I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah. It was exactly like that. It was, uh, I've I had mean, that yeah, before, and uh, that was what it was like. You ever walk behind one of them? Uh... Fast food places, and they got that big grease thing out there. Oh God, those are those are horrible. Oh, man. just the smell, man. It's just like disgusting. Oh God, but, it's uh, bad. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And then, I mean, you know, places have special places to put their used grease, but I would hate to be the one that had to clean that out. Oh, that would be a horrible job. Yeah, it would be. It would stink so bad. Right, it, right. it does stink so bad. And actually, hunters actually bear hunters actually use that to bait bears. Oh well, I can imagine it's the stink smell carries a long way. So, 
Yeah, it uh, does. I, I would guess that would work. But, you know, <laughs> fuck bear hunters. It's like, fuck you. Yeah. Who needs it's not them? like there's an overabundance of them or something. No, I mean, and no. And they can be a nuisance in some areas of the country, but... Hey, you know, when you be- go out in, uh, in the middle of the woods and build a house... You're right. gonna, you're, you're gonna get some bears. <laughs> right. While well, living in the country, well, you're moving into their territory. Right. That's the other way around. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, don't bitch about it. Right. Oh, we want to live in the country. Well, good. Okay. Dude. Well, deal with bears and mountain lions and all kinds of critters. Yeah. And uh, raccoons and everything you can think of. Yep. Eagles, yep. hawks. Don't be upset at them Snakes. for doing what they do. Right, you know, you moved into their territory, you know, <laughs> not the other way around. Right, right. It's like, whatever. I know, I know. So anyway, um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of Jeopardy. I like the Jeopardy show. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Um, there's been this guy on there this week, mm-hmm. and I forget his name, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, he, he lists himself, or they announce him as a professional sports gambler. Oh, okay. that, 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 that's apparently his job. Anyway, wow. he has been kicking ass, a- averaging like sixty thousand dollars a game, uh, w- winning every game just total blowouts, you know, um, o- over everybody. And uh, I-, I was just thinking about him being in the in the in the tra- chat trivia there. He he would have. Uh, he, he would have no competition, zero competition. <laughs> he just he, he starts off at the at the at the maximum on each category, the thousand dollar on the on the first, on the Jeopardy round, and uh, just just blasts across the thousand dollar answers and goes up. Anyway, if if you if you like trivia and you like uh, that kind of thing, check out the the Jeopardy on Monday because he'll still be there, obviously, still winning, and he's of, over like three hundred grand or something like that now. Um, I don't know what it is, 340 or something like that. Crazy. It's just crazy watching this guy uh, go up there. He, I mean, he does it. He's not, you know, fancy about nothing. He just answers, pop, 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 pop. And then if it, he gets like one of those uh, uh, daily double things or whatever where you get to bet, he he bets his whole pot, everything he's got. And and he gets the answers right, of course. <laughs> anyway, just a little, a little exciting there. I, I, I don't know. It's just uh, interesting to watch somebody like that. Uh, that knows all this stuff, and uh, eh, whatever. So Moose is uh, muted. She's listening for a second. All right, Moose. Well, here's a question for you. You had a bunch of snow this week there in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah you had a bunch of snow, right? Yep. Was it brown? No. Huh. All Why? right. Well, I, I came across this article today. And it says, why is brown snow falling in the United States Midwest? I did not see any brown snow. All right. Well, it says, after a major winter storm hit parts of the United States this week, residents of Minnesota have noticed something <laughs> unusual about fresh snowfall. Rather than blanketing the state, the state in bright white powder, it has the snow was marbled with patches of brown and orange. But what's what's mm. causing the uh, dirty snow? Chris O'Brien, meteorologist for the uh, U.S. National Weather Service, told Time Magazine the discoloration is caused by dust particles carried on strong winds all the way from Texas. I'm huh. think, I'm thinking chemtrails, but you never know. Uh, anyway, the the wind picked up a lot of dust and and got it entrained into the circulation of the storm storm system. And pulled it all the way up into Minnesota, where it fell with precipitation. Uh, satellite images show large plumes of dust drifting northwards from the United States-Mexico border. Uh, while the dust, while dust mixing with snow has happened before, Mr. O'Brien says it's unusual for it to go so far. Uh, we get discolored snow sometimes, but it's usually from dust that's closer to here, not all the way from the Mexican border. Weird. So, no, but it does mention also, uh, well, maybe not in this article. It might have been another one I was right reading. Uh-huh. Might be in one of these tweets here. Um, what was that uh, article? Where was that? On the BBC. Oh, wow. Interestingly enough. It's that, not on the news, the Minneapolis news site. Oh, well, yeah, they probably want to 
You know, they they don't want you to think that there's me live. Mexican Mexican dust, illegal Mexican dust. Oh yeah, illegal. <laughs> oh my God, really? <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, I, I, I thought it was quite interesting. Uh, I, I'm I'm going more with chemtrails. I, I think chemtrails. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that would, that I mean, be... probably by the time it got to here, it was. Not chemtrails anymore. You know what I mean? Well, it, 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 it was white. I it, mean, it was, it was frozen chemtrails by that point. Right. Yeah. So it 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 got here, but um, yeah, not fun. The whole yard, like I said, all our snow was gone. The tile was exposed. Jackson actually laid out in the in the yard a couple times last in Monday and Tuesday. He was able to lay out there. Cool. And uh, bask in the sun, and now it's like nope, nope, more snow again. Yep, there it is. More like again. Great. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, yeah, this winter has been unbelievable. It's been brutal. We've actually set a record now for most snowfall ever since I've been keeping records in Eau Claire. Wow. Which was 89. We were at 84, and then we, we broke the record with this latest one now. Cool. For most snow ever, yeah. I, I say cool, so, but you know, not necessarily. No, not really. No, it was actually so brutal. Like this is one of the worst brutal winters I've I've experienced like ever in my life. I think because it was bad. Yeah, yeah. It was that much snow and then that brutal cold. Oh my god. Yeah. That was bad. But anyway, um, trying to think of a better place to go, but. Yeah, well, you've got Oregon in yeah. your sights, so that's something. A little bit, you know. I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's far to go. It's scary. But I saw a meme that said something about not having fear or something. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it is scary. You know, moving it's to a, scary. Moving you know, to another state. I mean, you know, when I, when I moved out. We're moving, out, you know what I mean? You know, when I, when I moved out here, I, I left everything, you know. All the people and stuff that I knew behind it, moving out to a place I'd never been to, and and yeah, no, it, right. but but it all worked out great. So you know, but I have kids now, and it's yeah, but they're grown. I think they're grown. Yeah, they're grown, but it's still it's it's so it, it it's hard to know what to do. You know, I mean, I do definitely don't like my job. I'm definitely at the point where I'm going to be looking for something else. Right. Um. Yeah, uh, it's just, you know, and so I'm not really married, or, you know, married to a job or whatever. My job doesn't define me. Uh, and Peterson just did a home fucking run now. Who? What? Oh, my know. God. Uh, who, what, 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 I don't know what that's about. Oh, my God. He did. All right. So some just, guy I hit a home run. Well, I have dual monitors now, so I have, like, the Brewers game on over here, muted. Yeah. It's like do really. You have, do, you have, do you have the closed captions on? No, I don't. I could. I should. Yeah, you probably ought to. Do that. Yeah. All right. Well, here's a story. Here's a, here, here's a story that you'll like, even though okay. I doubt it will actually have any effect on the way things are. This is the truth, as I see it. Okay. From normal. dot org. THC limits not correlated to driving impairment. Okay. All right. The That's not surprising. The, the presence of THC in the blood is not correlated with driving performance and is not a reliable indicator of psychomotor impairment, according to recommendations made by a state-appointed traffic uh, safety task force. Oh, uh, this, this is out of Michigan, by the way, Lansing, Michigan. Oh, okay. Uh, Anyway, so uh, a report issued by the Michigan Impaired Driving Safety Commission finds that peak THC blood levels are not associated with maximal behavior impairment and further finds that the compound's influence upon driving performance varies significantly among individual consumers. As a result, where, where's my, I lost my spot here. Where, there it is. As a result, the commission recommends against the establishment of a of a threshold of Delta 9 THC bodily content for determining driving impairment and instead recommends the use of roadside safety tests to determine whether a driver is impaired. 
Oh my God! I, well, I agree with that. You know, don't be you know doing a whatever breath or blood test or whatever. If I could walk a straight line or whatever, then right, right, then I'm good okay. to go. Then leave me alone, and no matter how fucking stoned I am. Um, <laughs> Uh, the commission rec commission's recommendations are similar to those previously issued by the American Automobile Association (AAA), uh, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and other traffic safety experts who have similarly opined against the imposition of a per se threshold for the presence of THC. Normal similarly argues that the identification of THC in the blood is a poor predictor of either recent cannabis exposure or impaired performance. Uh, normal, for those of you that don't know, is the National Organization for Reform of Marijuana Laws. And they've been around for a long time. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it says here, the, the commission report f further, uh, further opines that subjects influenced by cannabis typically drive slower keep greater following distances, and take fewer risks than when sober. So they're right. Actually, they're, I agree with that. So, yeah. they're, so they're actually driving safer when they're stoned. Better. Yes, better. Yes. Uh, they add, while there is some uncertainty as to the crash risk associated with cannabis impairment alone, the research is clear that the risk is lower than that of alcohol impairment. Yeah, it's not even, there's not even the same ballpark. No, they're not. Oh, so five states, Montana, Nevada, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Washington, impose various per se limits based upon nothing for the detection of specific amounts of THC in the blood, while 11 states, Arizona, Delaware, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, Oklahoma, uh, Rhode Island, Oklahoma. Rhode Island, Utah, and Wisconsin, Wisconsin impose zero tolerant per se standards. In those states, it is criminal violation of the traffic safety laws to operate a motor, motor vehicle uh, with detectable levels of THC in the blood. So any, zero. So you have zero limits. Colorado law infers uh, driver impairment in instances where THC de detected in blood levels at levels of uh, 5 nanograms per milliliter. Nanograms! <laughs> Tiny, tiny amounts. So, uh, yeah, anyway, so you're driving better when you're stoned, but like I said, will that change anything just because uh, somebody actually put out a report saying that, hey, leave these people alone? Yeah. I'm going to no. say, no, that won't, that won't, that won't, that won't fix nothing. No, no, it will not. Nothing. So, um, you ever, yeah. you, you ever use Craigslist for anything? I have a couple of times, yep. All right, well, I, 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 I have looked at it, but I've never actually purchased anything through anybody on there. Yeah, I did for that stupid van that I bought for the boys, and the guy totally ripped me off. It was a total fucking rip-off. That guy was a dick. Yeah, well... And that was my last experience, okay. trying to buy a vehicle off Craigslist. It's like, that sucked. Well, and, and that's, a, that's a perfect segue into this, yeah. because... Um, According to this article here, let me post that in there, um, Craigslist will soon start charging five bucks to list a car for sale. Right now, everything's free. Uh, on Craigslist, you just go up there and add, put up ads, or uh, what, yeah, advertise whatever you want to sell. But it says most people who frequent the website likely have four Craigslist tabs. I, I couldn't even imagine why you would do that. Uh, open at any given time, since it's a reflex to check local car listings approximately every few minutes during a work day. Is it? Hmm. Is that something true? I don't know. Um, no, I don't do that, no. But the folks selling those cars are in for a surprise come April 15th, which is Monday. Tax day. Tax day. Steal, theft day. Um, Return day or theft day, yep. When Craigslist ups the list charge from free to five dollars, so you'll probably get some better quality ads, I would assume. I, I, I don't know, hmm. but if you got to pay five bucks rather than just putting anything up anytime you want, yeah, maybe. But uh, yeah. that five bucks is shit. It's nothing. Really. Well, I, I know, but you have to actually put in your information then. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. Anyway, as Road and Track and Reddit noted today, the public announcement of a of the change can be seen by opting to post for sale by owner listings 
on Craigslist, which takes the user to a page to click which category they want to put their listing in. The Cars and Trucks options has a green note next to it telling users that on April 15th, posting a vehicle ad by owner will no longer be free. Uh, so, hmm. whatever. Okay. I, I mean, I, like I said, I, I don't use it. I don't really care one way or the other, but... Um, yeah, I would be I, wary. I would be really wary using it because you just don't know who's who's posting that ad. You know, I know it. I know it ain't me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, as, as uh, Rob Works points out, Craigslist will soon commit suicide. Oh boy, Goober, Goobier, <laughs> Goobier. <laughs> How the hell you doing? Okay, um. All right, so this happened today, and I don't understand people. I just don't get it. What okay. is wrong with motherfuckers? Like, the Walmart thing was one thing. Like, no one was hurt. No one was, you know, harmed. I mean, some people were on fucking meth, and they fucking went wild in the Walmart. Okay, but well, you're, here so we go. You're a, you're this a... guy's at the Mall of America. There's a five-year-old kid there on the third floor, and he fucking... Pushes him or throws him off the fucking balcony. Who pushed who now? This 24-year-old asshole goes up to a 5-year-old or whatever and throws him over the fucking railing from the third level. Wow. See, I don't like... And it was just a total stranger. I do not like that place. It it was a total stranger to him? It was a total stranger, apparently. Wow. Out of the blue. And the kid's... You know, he'll be lucky if he can make it. He'll make it because he's critically, I mean, he's injured, life-threatening, you yeah, know. I yeah. mean, that's a long fall. I hate them all of America so bad. And, and uh, yeah, what the fuck's wrong with you people, man? I hate that. Mm. What What would, I mean, it, maybe the guy must have been, I mean, the only thing I can think is he's fucking crazy or he's fucking on something. All right, so it's a black you know, guy, Emmanuel D. Sean Aranda. Yeah. Um, what is wrong with people? Maybe he just hated his name. I don't know. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a, Why? That's a Why horrible would you name. do something like that? Right. Why? So. Unless you're on drugs or something. You know, there's no... Or fucked up in the head. It, obviously, the guy's not right. Yeah, yeah. That's weird. I mean, apparently there was no relation to the child. It was not, he was thought to not be of any relation to this kid. Huh. And he uh, he uh, does this. It's like the I would you know I I brought my kids to the Mall of America when they were that age you know around that age or my my mom has brought them. You know, can you imagine that? Right. You know, you're going to go to the Mall of America, have a good time. Uh, that'd you know. be that'd be, a, that'd be a great ball for a zombie movie. So uh, anyway, <laughs> it says. <laughs> Some some guy said he didn't see the incident, but he saw the aftermath. He said the child was laying motionless, and he was in a pool of blood. Well, yeah. Yeah, I don't, that kid's going to have definitely a brain injury if, if he makes it. They charge the guy with attempted homicide. Okay, it says the child did not suffer. Oh, did suffer. Yeah. Sign- significant injuries. Uh, yeah, the child has been well. I guess being thrown off three three floors. Yeah, it's high up too. I've been that to that place, and well, it's, you can, you can it's, see it in the picture. It's, you it's can, good, at least it's probably it's over fifty feet. Yeah, you can see in the picture. It's, I mean, these are these are not just like regular stories in a, no, in a it's house. No, a huge, huge facility. It's just a oh. huge building. I hate the place, and I just I'm surprised. You know, I mean, I'm surprised more people don't jump from the third floor there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's a huge... It's called the Mall of America, and it's been there for about 20 years. And it's just... To me, it's just the the worst of the worst when it comes to commercialism and capitalism. And I mean, not that there's anything wrong with making money, but this is commercialism. This is just... And it's, everything's high priced, and it's supposed to be... This great place, but it, it's just not impressive to me. Wow. Know? And I think they built it in Minnesota because um, <laughs> it's so big that it's like being in when you can go inside and escape the winter, you know? Yeah, yeah. In, in a huge place. There's restaurants in there, bars, and it's just, it's it's a monstrosity, in my opinion. Uh, it, it, I mean, it, it's, it looks huge, so whatever. 
Yeah, it is huge. It's it's sickeningly huge. It, it's too big. I I really hate it. Um, yeah. last year my son decided to go there twice last summer, and he ended up spending a bunch of money that he should not have spent. And I just I fucking hate the place. I it, it's I just hate it. it. It's it's designer clothes and you know like there's a Disney store there. I don't know if you were probably never been to a Disney store. I have right? not. Well, maybe maybe at Disneyland I went to a Disney store. No, but I mean, there's a they, Disney they, they store have, there. I don't know they, if it's still been, there. Uh, you know, they have those shops inside of Disneyland. Well, if you, I don't know if you've right, been to Disneyland. Right, but this is at this is like a retail <laughs> Disney store, okay? And I mean, you want this was years ago that I was there, but you walk in there and this the shit in there, it's all Disney stuff. Anything you can think of Disney, right? Right. Well, I've been to, I've been I've been to uh, I've been what? to a, I've been to an NFL store. Right, and it's like that. Except yeah. it's Disney shit, yeah, right? Yeah, Disney, same and thing, it, yeah. And it, 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 it's, everything's just super high price. Like, I couldn't, when I first went to the Mall of America, mm -hmm. the first time ever, and I, like, went in the Disney store just to check it out. Right. I couldn't believe how expensive the shit was in there. Yeah. I'm like, you've got to be fucking well, kidding it's me. the same in the NFL store. Well, yeah. It's crazy, crazy expensive crap in it there. It is. I mean, we went to Lambo. And you can buy a freaking t-shirt for, like, 50 bucks. Overpriced. You know, just just a regular old T-shirt in the, in the NFL store, fifty bucks, and then, and this was twenty years ago. Right, yeah, and it's ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> they jacked the shit up like so bad. Like and they had a purse in there; it was like a leather Packers purse. It was like four hundred dollars. Twenty years, thirty years ago. <laughs> it was like no, like two years ago when we went to the Packers game. That no, purse no, no, no. When, in, when, when in the I was store there. was two four hundred dollars. Yeah. I'm like, really? I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm not paying four hundred dollars for fucking Packers purse. I, I should, I should, even if it's leather and shit. I should sell my old Chargers jacket. I wonder yeah, if, you probably... Oh, Craigslist, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I wonder if people... I mean, it's San Diego. No. It's, it's San Diego, so would people eBay. still want it? You'd be better with eBay. Would people yeah. still want it? It's a San Diego. Right, exactly. So you'd, you'd be better selling it on eBay or whatever. I mean, you know, it's it's like... But, okay, uh, they're not San Diego anymore. Who wants it, right? No, they're not. It's a collector's item. Oh, okay. Well, it was it's expensive. Old, it's, it's a collector's item now. Man. It was, it was, it's it worth it research it. It was expensive what? when I got it. It was like 120 bucks or something. Was like it leather? No, it's it's uh, you know the whatever that windbreaker. No, it's a, it's a big heavy winter jacket. Oh, a winter one. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Is yeah. it in good shape? Oh yeah, I only wore it a few times. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> then it, oh yeah, you can sell that shit for big money, dude. Yeah. Some diehard Chargers fans gonna want that, dude. Yeah. I probably yeah, got. I, I, I guarantee you. I probably have. A, I probably <laughs> have a bunch. It's crazy what people want. You know yeah. what I mean? It's crazy. It, it is. Like I said, I probably have a bunch of other Chargers gear too. So. Anyway. Right. Hey, well, let's just more jams here. Let's do that. And uh, da, 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 where are we at here? Right here? Okay, we'll be back after these. And uh, yes, we shall. And enjoy, y'all. Hope everyone's enjoying themselves, and hope you're having a good Friday. Absolutely. Slash Saturday morning. And, and speaking of Good Friday, next Friday is Good Friday. <laughs> and, yes, and I will not be here. Um, oh, you won't be next here. Next Friday. I am actually off work next Friday. Oh, cool. Yeah, but I won't be here Friday night because I'm doing the concert thing. All right. What are you seeing? Um, Pertner, uh, Road to Blue Ox, Pertner Sandstone, and freaking them Cooley Boys. Sweet. At the Metro here in Eau Claire. Right on. Yeah, so it's going to be that shit, dude. I won't Ooh, be here next week, so it looks like balls to the wall, or just take a break, Grim. Sure, we'll, we'll figure it out. Anyway, uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> At least I'm let you know ahead of time and not, like, 15 minutes before the show starts. Yeah, no, a week. That's great. That's great notice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. The Dawes. All right. Thank you. <laughs> we know your name, Ugly Kid Joe. Everything about you live at Woodstock Festival, Poland 2013. Good stuff. Before that, Greta Van Fleet doing the uh, highway tune. You know, they, they could have called them the themselves the Kizga Family Band. I don't know even how you say that, but K-I-S-Z-K-A, the Kizga Family Band. <laughs> Greta Van Fleet. Uh, that, that's a great version of that. That, that, that video just yeah, came. Yeah, that video just came out uh, earlier this week, even though it was recorded last July. 
And we kicked it off with Amy's girl request there, the Doors doing Peace Frog. Yeah. Yep. yep. I just, I, the reason I asked if it was Peace Frog is because he talks about that accident that he witnessed when he was a small child. Yeah, yeah. And there's another song that is out there, and I can't think of which one it is, but he talks about that same incident as well. And it, so that really affected him. Like, his dad was a fucking, like, general almost in the fucking Navy or something. Right. And so he was, his dad was a fucking hard ass. Wow. You know, this is back in the fucking late 50s, early 60s, you know. Right. And so he moved, they moved around a little bit, but his dad was a real fucking hard ass. Yeah, well, a lot of them were back then. Military guys, they are. You know, I mean, you go, like, humans are humans, you know. If you subject a human to so much, they're gonna, it's going to affect them. Sure. That's why PTSD is a real fucking thing. And I don't care who the fuck you are, it's a real fucking thing. Right. Trauma causes problems in people's lives. It can make, it can. Not everybody. Everybody deals with trauma differently. Sure. You know, but it can wreak havoc. Oh, absolutely. And, it, you know, and it's a real fucking thing. Like, if you see something traumatic happen in your childhood, it could affect you. No you doubt about it. Life, unless you, like, deal with it, you know, get get through it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because it will affect you. Yeah. And no one goes through life unscathed at all. No one goes through life unscathed. Like, shit's going to happen in life. It just does, right? I mean, right. hopefully not traumatic and bad shit, but, you know, yeah. bad shit happens, right? Absolutely. Our life's not perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's no, you know, life's not perfect, you know? So, um, mm -hmm. do, you, do you have a coin? Handy? Yeah, I'm not handy. In okay. my wallet well, never mind. Just, just, just pick A or B. Okay. Pick one. Uh, A. All right, A it is. <laughs> I was gonna the deciding between the uh, fake black hole or or the Assange thing. So oh, <laughs> the shit. Same. I don't want. Oh man, I should have picked B. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll we'll get to Assange. It's later. okay. We'll, 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 we'll get we'll get to Assange later. Let's start with the fake black hole. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, and well, I, it's an algorithm that some college student devised. Well, she's not, I don't know if she's college. Well, maybe she is. She's from MIT. But, oh, no, she's older than, yeah, she, that's college. I, I, I think, MIT I think, is college. I, I think she has a PhD already, so I, I don't know. Oh, okay, so she's doing research or whatever. Yeah, she works at MIT. I'm pretty sure she's not. Uh, oh, okay. Anyway, so uh, from the mirror.co.uk. First photo of black hole is fake. Who claims? Who claims? Conspiracy theorist claims. Oh no! Not those. Oh my God! Not conspiracy theorists. Oh no! Oh God! And so so the, apparently this guy Roosh V, a controversial men's right activist, was it Hans? Uh, claims that the black hole photo is almost certainly fake. Well, it is fake because they tell you that it's fake because. They obviously don't have a way to photograph a black hole. So they collected various data, terabytes, many, many, uh, pay, petabyte, five petabytes was what it was, um, that they collected of data, and they ran that through some algorithms and said, okay, this is what the black hole looks like. However, if you look at the picture of the black hole, it looks like what Hollywood will tell you a black hole looks like. Right, exactly. Right. So, uh, anyway, this is uh, from earlier this week, uh, April 11th. Okay. And people were going a little bit, not me. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever, a picture yeah. of a black hole, yay. Yeah. So, yesterday, yesterday, an international team of astrophysicists made history after they revealed the first ever photo of a black hole. But, of course, it's not a photo. Um, anyway. What is it, then? An image. Of what? A manufactured image of using the data. You believe? Well, that's what it is. It's an image. It's not a photo. It's it's, a, it's an image that was created from the oh, data okay. to, to to simulate what a black hole would look well, like. Well, what their data says once run through the algorithms 
that this woman created. All right. So when when the or team of people, she probably creates the algorithm by herself. Right. Right. It's got to be a whole. Yeah. So while the image has been hailed by many as a landmark for physics, some people, me, have claimed that the image is not real. Roosh V claims that the black hole photo is almost certainly fake. They wouldn't. Do, they wouldn't do that, though, Graham, would they? Yes. Would scientists do that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> really? Of course they would. Just look at the whole global warming scam. Okay, thank you. Of course, they fake everything. Anyway, and also, I mean, if you want to, but have, it's real though. Do you want? You want? Well, it's a real. Science is real, right? Science is real if you if it's done properly. Yeah. Okay. And, <laughs> anyway, so he tweeted an image of the black hole alongside the image of Katie Bauman, who led the creation of the algorithm behind the image. He said, "Black hole photo is almost certainly fake." I'm not good at Photoshop, but can create more believable black hole photos than this. Well, yeah, you would think you'd be able to create a photo that looks like a black hole without using algorithms and shit, just using, like, a, a really good editing program or whatever, you know, or Photoshop-type program. Right. It says uh, his tweet was, uh, three years ago, MIT student, grad, uh, grad student Katie Bauman uh, led the creation of a new algorithm to produce the first ever image of a black hole. The image was released today. Um, so they tell you right there that, that this is what they're doing. They're, they're taking data and they're feeding it through an algorithm and coming up with an image of what they believe that would look like. It says it only went viral because the news is desperate to pat a woman on the head for doing anything but make a baby. <laughs> well, you gotta, you gotta remember that he's he's one of these Hans type guys that that that's a, yeah. a, a men's men's rights dude, so uh, men's rights advocate, whatever the hell that is. Uh, worryingly, many people appear to agree with Rushvi's claims. Why is that worrying? I I don't know. One, one, one user, I don't know. Why is it worrying? Well, one you one user replied, laughing my ass off. This is ridiculously true. <laughs> she wanted vitality and she got it. Right. Another, another added, I bet in reality she probably has a science geek beta orbiters doing the research for her <laughs> behind the scenes. And she see, I'm not taking anything away from her because she was a woman. Right. I mean, I give her as much credit as I'd give any. You know, and she's yeah. Men are no smarter than women. I'll tell you that right now. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Grimner. And it says, while well, Rouge V sounds pretty bitter, and he does, uh, about Miss Bowman's incredible achievement, <laughs> MIT was quick to praise her work. Well, of course, it's it's more bucks for their for MIT. I mean, oh, of huge, course. Huge, huge, We're huge, MIT. Huge We're bucks. MIT. Well, and, I, and I respect MIT. They're a good school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of a lot of very brainy people come out of there. I mean, you got to be you got to be fairly brainy to get in there in the first place. Apparently, yeah, as you do. That's anyway, correct. they tweeted, MIT tweeted, scientist Katie Bauman just posted about the moment when she, when the first image ever made of a black hole, was cre was was processed. See, so it's they're telling you it's an image. It's not a photo. It wasn't created using any kind of a camera. And it was processed, meaning it was data was fed through through the thing. So just to clarify, the first in image anyone ever made of a black hole. Well, I've seen many images of black holes in various movies. Um, so it's not the first image ever made, just the one that right. that 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 they're, they're using there. So uh, <laughs> anyway, the comments are kind oh. of the, the comments on that are kind of funny as well. Um, so you might want to look through those later on over there on the mirror, which is, you know, of course, one of those tabloid sites from the UK. So, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, there's that on that. And speaking of the, the Hansel one, hey, Hans. <laughs> there he be. There he be. Um, Okay. Uh, where where do we yeah. go? Where 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 do we go with this Assange? I don't know. This Assange, where do we go from here? No, no the the Assange thing. Where do we go now? There's so much crazy crap about the whole Assange thing. It, uh, you know. It, it, all right, uh, we'll, we'll just start with this one from from RT.com, Russia Today. Um, 
five years for attempt to crack a password. <laughs> really? An attempt to crack a password, which they yeah. don't even have proof of. Right. Be that as it may. Journalist whistleblowers slam the United States for the Assange charge. Uh, journalists and whistleblowers have weighed in on the indictment brought by the United States against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, calling the current password cracking charge weak, but setting a very dangerous precedent for press freedom. The statement from the Department of Justice on Wednesday said Assange has been charged for engaging in conspiracy to crack oh, yeah, right. conspiracy to crack a password. He didn't actually crack a password. They, none of them, they, they, they didn't get it, he, and the guy didn't need it. Uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Chelsea Manning or uh, Bradley Manning at the time. Um, so right. they, they, he didn't need it. He was already in there. He already had the info he needed. Right, anyway, right. so uh, on, on the Department of Defense computer, in order to release classified information, if found guilty, he could face up to five years in prison. Uh, the fellow f fellow whistleblower and former CIA employee Edward Snowden said on Twitter that the weakness of the United States charge against Assange is shocking. In that allegation yes. that Assange and Manning had tried to crack the password had been public knowledge for almost 10 years. And, <laughs> and that the Obama administration's DOJ had concluded that prosecuting Assange would pose a threat to press freedom. And I hate yeah. to I hate to agree with Obama on anything, but Me too. <laughs> God damn if he ain't right on that. Um, right. Glenn Greenwald chimed in. The DOJ says part of what Assange did to justify his prosecution, beyond allegedly helping Manning get the documents, is he encouraged Manning to get more docs for him from uh, for him to publish. Journalists do this with sources constantly. It is the criminalization of journalism. So the U.S. media reported on the attempt in 2011. Uh, it's not known whether Manning and Assange actually managed to crack the password in question, but the wording of the DOJ statement could suggest that their attempts were not successful. Uh, I'm not sure who Aaron Mate is. Uh, but it says the charge against Assange is that he agreed to assist Manning in cracking a password stored on the U.S. Department of Defense computers. It looks like their alleged password cracking agreement, quote unquote, was not successful. Assange faces five years in prison over it. Uh, Green Jesus Christ. Uh, Greenwald also commented on the Obama era decision, saying that the Democrats who have spent two years feigning concerns over press freedom freedom, in relation to the Trump administration's attacks on journalists, but who now support the Trumpers' uh, DOJ indictment of Assange were beneath contempt. Internet freedom activist Kim.com also weighed in on the potential five years prison sentence for trying to crack a password? Is it still April Fool's Day? Uh, he, tweeted, he tweeted with the hashtag Free Julian. Uh, in, a, in a further tweet, .com said that the sentence was possibly a tactic to tempt Assange to consider swift extradition, but that more and heavier charges likely awaited. Uh, DOJ may have a superseding indictment with more charges ready on arrival. I can tell you from experience, the DOJ is full of liars and tricksters. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, like it goes that. on uh, talking about various things about that, but uh, th this whole thing it, it, it is it's bad. However, however, and I've read um, here on IRC and other channels um, yes. that it's possible that Trump just wants him back here to get the dirt on Hillary. Um, that could be, and and then to and right now Trump is is disavowing any knowledge of WikiLeaks or Assange, although he said previously that he loved WikiLeaks and thought Assange was a great guy. 
<laughs> so okay, he, he well, could be just trying to get him back over here so he can get yeah. all the dirt that he needs on, well, Hillary Obama, the whole... Okay, so here's what I found, though. This is what people are worried about. Most, right. They're more worried about his cat. Oh, well, yeah, what happened to his cat? 32,000 Twitter followers ask, where will it go and what does it know? We, we, we don't know. We don't know about you know, what does it the know. <laughs> they're worried about his cat. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, they're worried about his fucking cat. His cat named James. And he could be regularly seen at the embassy window. Right. He right. even had his own Twitter Instagram pages. Yeah, no, I've seen a bunch of memes about the cat. Yeah, and it's like, you know, the poor kid, cat. It's not cat's fault. Well, no, of course not, but... Who the owner is. You know, hopefully someone adopts him or he gets back to Julian Assange. You know, I mean, it's like... Don't be cruel to fucking cat. You know. Oh no, certainly don't be cruel to cat. No, no. I mean, come on. That, that, you know, that, that's just... people are not going to take this lightly. If yeah. Something happens to this cat. They're going to want to know what, hap what happened to his cat. You know, which I think is a is a valid, you know, question. Right. Absolutely. I mean, come on. It's an animal, people. You know, it's a pet. You know. Absolutely. No, yeah. And yeah, I mean. Dude, this is it, 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 people think. Oh, you're free. You know, this is a free country. What's the what was the cat's like, name? What's the cat's name? James. <laughs> James the cat. All right. And he's cute. He's a cute cat. Oh, I mean, okay. there's no doubt. He's a cutie. He's right. really cute. As cats go. Um, they are. <laughs> yeah. He is a cute cat. So I, you know, I I don't know. There's there, there's so many different ways um, to to look at these uh, these these stupid charges. Um, right, and people all have their opinion. This, that, and other thing. Oh, he's a traitor. He was trying to hack. It's like, come on, people, free you fucking lax. Right, Jesus Christ. Well, one of one of my favorite articles on this. Get this. your fucking bee out of your bonnet and chill the fuck out. Oh, okay. Uh, Hansel says the cat has left the Ecuadorian embassy. But so, where did it go? I don't know. You have to read the NPR article there. Yeah, okay, well, I'll look into it. Yeah. Anyway, so one of my favorite articles this week about the whole Assange thing was this mm -hmm. one by Charles Hughes Smith of TwoMinds.com. Uh, this, however, posted on the DailyCoin.org. Mm -hmm. uh, so here it is. Assange and the Unforgivable Sin of disemboweling official narratives. And that, oh, boo-hoo! Well, no, that's what it comes down to, is, is, is he... Right, they, he, he went he tried to go against them or expose them in some way, and, yeah, and so they didn't like that. Right, And that's right. just like, that could happen to any one of us, people. Absolutely. That could happen to any of us, anybody here, anybody listening, that could happen to you. No doubt about you it. Because if they decide to, again... See what's on your hard drive, or you know what you've searched before. It can happen to anybody. Yeah. And if you're trying to be a person that's doing what he he was trying to do is go against the establishment or expose them on some level, that could happen to anybody. All right. Well, let's let's give you a little so, bit of this here. Okay, uh, go ahead. All right. Um, and, and I had to look up what the hell an S curve decline was because I'm not. I mean. I have no idea. I, I like math, but I'm not really into so much into business math. Anyway, the the entire global status quo is on the cusp of the S curve decline phase. There is really only one unforgivable forgivable sin in the political realm, and that's destroying the official narrative by revealing the facts of the matter. This is why whistleblowers who make public the secret machinery of the elaborately artful lies underpinning all official narratives are hounded to the ends of the earth and beyond. Employees of state entities such as Ellsberg, Manning, Snowden are bound by vows of secrecy and threatened by the promise of severe punishment. Outsiders such as Assange are even further beyond the pale because they can't be accused of being traitors as they never took the vows of secrecy required by the deep state. The single most damaging revelation to all of the elaborate lies that make up official narratives 
is the truth revealed in official emails, documents, and conversations? This is why virtually every document and correspondence is now classified. So anyone releasing even a mundane scrap can be sentenced to rot in a federal prison. Uh, where did I go there? Do, do, do. Uh, in a recent C-SPAN interview, author Nomi Prinz explained that the incredibly difficult the incredible difficulty of accessing papers in presidential libraries now due to virtually everything being classified. Freedom of Information Act applications must be filed and researchers must wait years to gain access to routine correspondence that was freely available to everybody decades or so ago. A decade or so ago. Official paranoia has a 100% correlation with the amount of damage done to official narratives by any leaks of the facts of the matter. What the hell are they so afraid of? Here's the dynamic in play. The more fragile the narrative, the greater the dependence on the half-truths and lies. The greater the official urgency to crush all whistleblowers and maintain a Stasi-like vigilance against any murmurs and of dissent or doubt. The entire contraption wasn't so vulnerable to exposure, or if the entire contraption wasn't so vulnerable to exposure and so dependent on lies, what, what's with the infinite paranoia? This paranoia extends past the present system of lies into the past, as exposing lies decades past calls into question the official narratives of today. Any doubt it is, is extremely dangerous, even as if even a single thread is pulled loose, the entire fabric of the ginned-up statistics, false assurances, half-truths, and outright lies unravels. Once the Pentagon Papers revealed the facts of the war in Vietnam, supported for uh, the official narrative, uh, support for the yeah, official, official, quote unquote. official narrative collapsed essentially overnight. However, if you recall, and the Pentagon Papers was handed off to the Washington, uh, the uh, New York Times. Yep. And they published it. Right. Nobody got in trouble. Nope, they were, didn't, did were, they? they? They nobody who said, "Hey, who is your source?" I mean, they have said that, but but not once the source was was not given, then then uh, that was it. I mean, that was it. So um, so what's the deal now? Why why is it now that uh, this guy did this? And they, oh, he was a hacker. Of course, he wasn't a hacker. He was just a guy collecting the information being handed to him by somebody. And and right. and publishing it just like the New York Times did. Exactly, exactly. No different. This guy, this this Assange guy, whether you want yeah. to believe in him or not, and I know there are plenty that think he's a tool of of the system. Right, but I don't, I don't believe that. I, I don't believe it either. Um, uh, but but they, a lot of people want to believe that he's a tool of the system, uh, mm -hmm. and, and and that he's being used to uh, convince you to to not release secrets of the state. No matter no matter what, because they're, you're going to have consequences against you. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh God, I, I don't know. It's it's all just ridiculous. Um, and, and so I, I we'll have to wait and see what happens with this because uh, he is fighting extradition. Apparently, uh, mm -hmm. is, is what I've heard on this. And uh, and and even if he does get back here, then. You know what? What are they? What kind of things are they going to ask him? Are they going to ask him about the hacking, or are they going to ask him about all the information that he had? Um, which apparently, and, and I've been reading various things. Some people said there was supposed to be a, a data dump had he, if he ever actually got arrested. And of course, he'd been arrested, and I haven't mm -hmm. heard about anything of a new data dump yet. Another said there was a data dump if he ever got killed, which um, I, I saw a meme today. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Hillary Clinton, <laughs> and, oh, and it said, "Are you worried about the uh, information <laughs> Assange may release?" And she said, "That she says that's silly. He's going to commit suicide next Wednesday." What? <laughs> it's Hillary. Wow. It's Hillary. It's a Hillary meme, meme, right? What? Was that a meme or something? Yeah, it was, a, it was a Hillary meme. They were making fun oh, of all, okay. all of oh, the yeah. all of the Clinton deaths, you know. Um, right. Oh my God. And, and since this guy has so much dirt on her, 
then obviously he's he's you know next next in line. So. Right, right, right. For exactly. one of these amazing suicides where he shoots himself three yes, times, exactly. three, three times but in the head. Are we doing a music break? Or yeah, yeah, we, we are. are. Yeah, we are. Okay, okay. <laughs> then I, when we get back, I will talk about the uh, the story. It, it's related. It's related. All right, all right. No, I. I I didn't really want to go into either of the, the the fake black hole or the the fake Assange crap. Too much. But right. you, you know. But yeah, I hear you. I'm it, glad you did. Though. It, it's been so huge, and I'm glad you did. No, it's it, it and we needed to talk about his cat. I mean, oh, the absolutely. Cat, I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I, I want the cat to be okay. Uh, me too. I no, hope the cat's I fine. You know, I All want right. James the cat to be fine. All right. Me too. All right. Okay. We'll be back, people. All right. Enjoy. You guys. All right, there. Feeding Leroy doing wildfire. It says boats and bluegrass, uh, but it didn't look like they were on a boat to me. Uh, anyway, great stuff there. Uh, before that, we had Joe Bonamassa doing Spoonful at the Muddy Wolf at Red Rocks concert. That was a great, great performance. And kicked it off with Billy Strings in While I'm Waiting Here. Yes, thank yeah. you so much. Quite the set, huh? Oh, that was awesome. All right. Joey B, Billy Strings, and Susan Leroy, like, hello. <laughs> no, excellent. Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah, yeah. Susan Leroy, well, that was, they do a special session at Blue, both the Bluegrass um, where they have a building, um, a, it's a park-type building where they go and only so many people can go to it. Like, you have to pre-buy a ticket and it sells out. So I've never been, I've been to Bullets and Bluegrass many times, but I've never been to that session live. Right. But anyway, they do that every year. And all different, like Horseshoes and Hand Grenades has done it. All different kinds of bands that have played at Bullets and Bluegrass has done it. But, um, yeah, that's one of my favorite bands. And they're from Minnesota. They're just excellent. I met Sonia, the female guitar player, last year at Revival Festival. Yeah. He is super nice, dude. Just down to earth, just really friendly, really just, you know, loving it. Just so happy. It was awesome, you know? Oh, cool. Yeah, great. Yeah, so great people and just really, really um, good band. I mean, they have that heart player. He is excellent. And even that, you know, they have an electric guitar, but he like, he's like, he plays like a steel guitar he, he takes, you know, because Letus, the guitar player, also plays steel guitar. But okay. when they they have the electric guitar player, he's like, that sounds like a steel guitar to me in that song. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So anyway, I was, we were talking, chatting before the music set, and we were talking about the Assange thing and blah, blah, blah. And I made the point, because I, I just found this the other day, and I I had known about this before, but I, um, you know, hadn't thought about it for a while. You know, it was in the back of my mind, but, you know, one of them things. <clears throat> anyway, it's called the CIA Secret Heart Attack Gun. Okay. And if you guys, you know, you hear about these suicides of these higher-up people, you know. Right. But not all of them are suicides. They are not. And so they have this weapon that they use, uh, the CIA. Right. And it's called a, you know, a secret weapon. It shoots a small poison dart to cause a heart attack. Mm-hmm. And the dart uh, can penetrate clothing and leave nothing but a tiny red dot in the skin. Right. On penetration of the deadly dart, the individual targeted for assassination may feel as if bitten by a mosquito. They may not feel anything at all. Right. The poison dart. The poisonous dart completely disintegrates upon entering the target. The lethal poison then rapidly enters the bloodstream, causing a heart attack. Once the da- once the damage is done, the poison denatures quickly, so that an autopsy is very unlikely to detect that the heart heart attack resulted from anything than nat- other than natural causes. Sounds like the perfect perfect uh, James Bond weapon, doesn't it? Yet this is all verifiable verifiable in congressional testimony. The astonishing information about this secret weapon of the CIA comes from the U.S. Senate testimony in 1975, 1975, on rogue activities of the CIA. The we- this weapon is only one of many James Bond-like discoveries of the Church Committee hearings. 
officially known as the United States Senate Select Committee, to study governmental operations with respect to intelligence activities. Mm, very interesting. And I will link this to you. Not a shock, not a surprise. No, not at all. You know, but, uh, and for those of us that oh, I was like nine or six or something, it was seventy-five. I was nine. Yeah. So, there you go. Oh yeah, you would say that, dude. <laughs> well, it is a Beatles song title too. Um, uh, anyway, oh, okay. anyway. Um, but I, I mean, you guys don't. I mean, you know. Okay, look it up. 1975 congressional hearings, congressional sure. testimony. It was explained. It was put out there. Right. Okay. They told the Congress about this weapon. Yeah. So, and it's proven. Look it up. Look it up. The weapon is only one of many, many uh, James Bond-like discoveries of the Church Committee hearings. The Church Committee hearings, that's what the name of it is, officially known, but that was the, the slang term, officially known as yeah. the United States Senate Select Committee right. to study right. governmental operations with respect to intelligence activities, 1975. Right. All right? So... All you people that think, you know, all this conspiracy theory crap. Hey. Uh, it, isn't, it isn't a conspiracy. It is not conspiracy. Most of, most, of, uh, most of the conspiracy theories turn out to be true. Exactly. In, in some way, whether or not they're exactly accurate, but pretty close. Right, right. So anyway, on a whole another switch of topics and just kind of trying to shake it up here. Yeah. Um, just going to take a little break from the CAA crap and government stuff and talk about this. And it's called, this woman is called Gypsy Lee, Gypsy Rose Lee. All right, I've heard of her. And she was a blur left dancer, one of the first striptease artists. All right. Left dancer. And apparently her son has released a documentary about her life. Okay. And uh, if you even ch click on that link, and uh, there's some pretty racy pictures there. Good-looking lady. Uh, she had quite the life. She was a, a trailblazer when it comes to bur burlesque and that type of thing. Um, but there's some really good historic pictures, and now there's a documentary. So I would check that out. I just wanted to li liven things up or lighten th the mood a little bit, just... You know, because it gets depressing talking about all this, cons you know, well, non-conspiracy, true, <laughs> actual, governmental bullshit. Right. Anyway, so there's that. Just wanted to, like, share that with everyone in case you're into that kind of thing. Uh, all right. Well, let, me ask, history, let, 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 me, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Did you ever watch the uh, Planet of the Apes movies? Sure. And And, and did you like them? Sure. Okay, the cool. old ones from the old school yeah, ones? Yeah, 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 the old ones with... Uh, yeah, yeah like, who was it? Charlton Heston? Hello? Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Hello? All right, so here we go. <laughs> <laughs> here we go from futurism.com. Wasn't Roy Schneider in that, too? Mm, oh, he might have been in, in the initial uh, flight. Roy Schneider, wasn't he? The guy from the Jaws guy. Yeah, I don't recall. I don't recall. I think he... Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. Okay, go ahead. No. Anyway, this from futurism.com. Mm -hmm. Chinese scientists. Gene, oh, here we go. Scientists. Gene hacked super smart human monkey hybrids. They gene hacked them. Well, they used gene hacking to make these monkeys very smart. Okay. So, for the first time, according to this article anyway, mm -hmm. uh, scientists have used gene editing techniques to make monkey brains more human-like. Gene editing techniques. Interesting. Uh -huh. The monkeys, uh, rhesus macaques, <laughs> I, 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 had to, I had to look up this word and listen. Yeah, that is a true name of a monkey. It is. Uh, but but, but it's funny, if, 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 if you look up the uh, the word on, like, dictionary.com, I got a little thing right, there right. that'll yep. pronounce the word. Macaque. 
Macaque. Yep. Yeah, it's <laughs> like M A C A Q U E or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. I'm like, yeah. what? What about macaque? Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> so so <laughs> the the monkeys, Reese's macaques, got smarter. They had superior memories. Oh, yeah. You know what? They're already smart. Why would you want to try to make them even smarter? Okay, well they they I mean, had su- you know, come on. They they <laughs> had superior memories to unaltered monkeys, according to recently published research that kicked off a fiery debate among ethicists about how far scientists should be able to take genetic experimentation. Well, what, no matter what you tell them about how far they should, they're going to keep going because they can. Uh, so there's a, a cognitive gap there. So the, team, the team of Chinese scientists edited the human version of the gene called MCPH1 into macaques, uh, the the new gene made the monkeys' brains develop along a more human-like timeline. The gene-hacked monkeys had better reaction times and enhanced short-term memories compared to their unaltered peers. Um, uh, but not everyone is on board. I'm raising my hand. I'm not on board. I remember those movies very well. <laughs> The use of transgenic monkeys to study human genes linked to brain evolution is very a very risky road to take, absolutely. According to the uh, University of Colorado geneticist James Sakella, told the MIT Technology Review, it is a classic slippery slope issue and one that we can expect to recur as this type of research is pursued. Uh, pinpointing that genes' role in intelligence could help scientists understand how humans evolved to be so smart. Yeah, it could help, maybe possibly help you understand it, but, um, yeah. It, well, while altering one gene to enhance memory in some macaques won't throw uh, Darwinism off kilter, there is no risk of a Planet of the Apes style uprising. Yet. It could teach us how humanity became so intelligent and uh, hints as to a why. <laughs> so, um, you know, not, not, it's not a good idea. You guys are, you guys, you guys, you guys are not, you're, you're doing, this is, this is, this is over the line kind of stuff. I, 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 I don't like it. I don't, I don't like when they start doing this. But um, yeah, there, there they are. And uh, leave macaque alone. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! <laughs> Still there, Moose? Did I lose you? Oh shit! I muted. Sorry. Oh, all right. Macaque monkeys. It's the real name for them. It is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, oh, here's another big story from this week. A big? Oh, big story. All right, what's it, lay it on me. All right, what is it? Israel fails attempted moon landing. As, oh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, well, this says as calm with spacecraft lost. I think this was right after it happened, uh, but apparently others have said it was the engines that quit working or whatever. And I don't, I don't really have too much to say about it other than the fact that did it? Did it fail, or or did they actually land it and they just don't want us to know? Right, right. You know. We don't. How do we know? I, I don't know. Anyway, it says Israel's private spacecraft, Bereshit, crashed into the moon on Thursday after being hit with problems during descent, denying the Jewish state a place in the elite club of nations that mastered a lunar landing. Right. Yeah, like the U.S. ever went there. Um, anyway, <laughs> small, right. small country, big dreams, the engraving on the spacecraft's body read. But those dreams were not destined to come true. Bereshit's engine stopped working around 10 kilometers from the surface, with the vehicle crashing into the moon at a speed of over 130 meters per second. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, so you could read about it, but uh, it was it was one of the big stories of the week that kind of got buried by the um, Assange thing as, you know, did did everything else. So I, 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 right, don't, right. I don't know how many big stories got buried by the whole Assange thing, but you always got to look at what they're not telling you about. 
Right. When, yeah, you when, do, when, but when, you still you never know really, you know, what's what's right, what's real, you know. But you can read between the lines. Right, right, right. You know, and just make a determination. Yeah. Oh, it, where is it, it going? It's called questioning authority. It's called thinking for yourself. Don't let someone else think for you. Okay, there, there's a story that I had marked for tonight. Okay. That it's no longer there, but oh, I have but I have the headline. All right. Latest Ebola outbreak could be declared a global emergency. Oh crap! This was posted on WesternJournal.com, and now when I look it up, it says error 404. The page you were looking for no longer exists. I imagine that. <laughs> So they don't want you to know about the Ebola outbreak. Um, <laughs> oh, God. No, they don't. They don't want you to know about a lot of things, you know. Oh, here's a story now. It's from the the site you don't like, but. Well, that's a lot of them. Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> this site, okay, what do you got? National Vaccine Information Center uh -huh. and says, you know, this is not a study I would approve of. It says, yeah. NYC sends disease detectives in Jewish neighborhoods looking for unvaccinated. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's right. They're this doing that. From April 13th, 2019. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're doing the force. April, April 13th. That's tomorrow. Yeah. Well, depending well on New York, it's it's tomorrow. It's April 13th now. All right. <laughs> but anyway, here's that. All right. All right. Disease detectives, people. Yep. Yep. Either. And that's a new one for me. Disease detectives. Oh, that's a, that's a horrible idea, too. Yes, it yes, is. Yes, it is. So. I mean, it, things are getting real here, people. Uh, yeah. Well, they've real. always been, but... Uh, you know, it's time to really step it up, Did motherfuckers. A... Let's, thought, let's, uh, here's uh, this one. Here's wait, this one. Wait, I thought I had this it. I thought health I had... Impact. Okay, this is on the site I have not heard of yet. What's that? Health Impact News. Damn. Versus VaccineImpact.com? Or something. Who knows? I don't I know. But this is from... Uh, it says measles outbreaks, how a witch hunt against parents of unvaccinated children was unleashed. Here's that. Okay. This is nuts, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not good. This the, is not good. When they sit sit there and go, okay, it's mandatory, you want to fucking run the fuck away from that shit. Really fast. Yeah, you do not want to go there. Let's okay. just not go there. All right. So um, is, okay, they got disease detectives. They're calling for mandatory vaccinations in New York fucking city. Right. Which is one of the most populous cities in this country. I think it's the biggest. Yeah, it's the biggest. Yeah, and you know, people, shit's getting real. This is a time either step it up or fucking you're not gonna fucking make it, dude. You're gonna be fucking highly disappointed. Yes, you will. And not re ready for anything. At all, not ready to deal with it, and you're going to be a hurting unit. You know, it, it's time to like let go. Reminds me of uh, infamous string Lister song that I love so much. Let it go. All right, this next one I, I'll yeah, give you. Anyway, a bit. go ahead. I'll, I'll just give you a little bit because I just found it humorous. Okay. Cannabis used for federally funded research <laughs> is ditchweed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Really? Uh, yeah. Is that the Onion? No, it's on Boulder Weekly. Boulder Boulder Weekly. Mm. Okay. All right. So anyway, to, so I'll just give you the first paragraph here. In case you are looking for more ways to be embarrassed by the federal government, you can <laughs> add growing brickweed to the list. Research, oh, researchers at the University of Northern Colorado found the cannabis supplied by the only federally authorized cultivation site in the country shared a closer genetic affinity with hemp samples in most analysis than what commercial dispensaries are selling in legal states. Uh, just like the line 
uh, the line cook at Denny's who sold you dime bags in high school that the feds were peddling and the feds are peddling swag. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> swag! <laughs> All right, we got this. This next set's kind of long, so we should get into it. Yeah, uh, let's do that. All right. All right, then. And smoke we'll be your back, people. Smoke your government swag, people. <laughs> oh, you got to love it. Yeah. All right. For Cowboy. We'll leave it. All right. Oh, yeah, mighty fine stuff, mighty fine. Samantha Fish, somebody's always trying live at the Telluride Blues Festival. Just excellent. Uh, before that, we had a Miss Kate request there. Uh, Tab Benoit, or uh, Benoit, Benoit, Tab Benoit, if you prefer the American pronunciation of Tab Benoit. Uh, we make a good gumbo, and uh, Kate will probably be seeing Tab uh, very soon here, down there at her hometown. Well, I don't know where she's living. I wouldn't call that her home down. Anyway, we kicked it off with a Cowboy Tech request. Uh, put your lights on uh, with Everlast there by Santana. So, great stuff. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, Cowboy Tech's got something for me here. Let's take a quick look. Uh, how to vote for freedom and justice. You can't. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> no, you not. No, you cannot. <laughs> and Telluride would be an excellent place to see a blues festival. Oh, damn, damn right. Yes, it would. And you know what? No, what? The fucking Dusters are playing in Vegas right now. Is that so? And they're on Mixler. Oh, well, you'll I be... might have to cut our conversation short after the show, Graham, just because right. I'm yeah. just saying that's my Dusters. That's my boy. That's I my know. Dusters. I know how it goes. It's my dusters. <laughs> it's my dusters, baby. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm um, just saying. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, yeah, but Tell Your Ride would be an incredible place to see at any music festival, really. 12, 12, 40. I would think. Um, oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Colorado, dude. You know, um... I loved I loved it when I, I visited Colorado. It was very beautiful. All right, let me uh, get a couple oh, quick quick story. Sure. Get a couple quick sure, stories ahead. here. I only got a couple minutes, so. No. Uh, and I wanted to mention this. I should have mentioned it earlier when we were talking about Assange, but I mm -hmm. I spaced on it. Um. Guess what happened just before Ecuador pushed Assange out the door. What? The IMF approved a $4.2 billion loan for Ecuador. Wow. <laughs> wow. I don't, I don't really know if I need to say anything else about that. I think that uh, pretty much covers it right there. Uh, why, did right. They, why did they finally kick him out? Well, because they got paid off. Oh, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, they did. So. Uh, sure they did. Uh, yeah, absolutely, by the IMF, yeah. So uh, there's that, and then uh, <laughs> God. oh, 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 this yeah, we got to mention this just because you're all fans of the Internet Archives here, yeah, yeah. The EU right. EU tells the Internet Archive that much of its site is terrorist content. Terrorist. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. there, there, there is a right. little. Uh -huh. there, there, there is a little update here at the very top of it. Let me just cover this here. Uh, the Internet Archive has issued a minor correction to its original story, noting that it was not actually Europol who sent the demand, but rather the French Internet referral unit using the Europol system so that it looks like it was coming from Europol. Here's the update correction this post previously. that I don't, I don't, I don't care about the update. Uh, what we do care about, though, is that the fact that all of the millions of books 15 million uh, books from the Project Gutenberg. Uh, there, 15 million uh, freely downloadable texts. The famed Prelager Archive. The Archive's massive 
Grateful Dead collection. And a, and, and, and a bunch of things. What? Well, yeah, you know, okay, you know Grateful Dead, they're, they're a bunch of terrorists. They're terrorists. <laughs> what? Fuck that. That's, that's terrorist content. That's yeah. not true. Grateful that's Dead. not true at all. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can put that in your pipe and smoke it. Right. Um, Fuck off. <laughs> what do we got here? 46. Okay, I got another minute. Um, okay. Alright. <laughs> Oh, oh, we'll skip that one. Um, oh, yeah, there's, there's a problem with WPA3. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. What is, uh, what is that? It's, a, it's, your, it's your network security. You're, you're presently using WPA2, as all of us are on the wide, your wireless home security, but there's problems with the new new WPA3. Um, <laughs> but, but oh, here, 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 the invasion continues, I should say. Microsoft says Edge may come to Linux. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and, great. And, and, I, and I also read they're trying to push a, a, a version of Edge for Windows 7. Um, so, wh why? why? Why Why? would anybody want that? I, 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 don't, I have no clue. <laughs> I don't get it either. I don't know. Right, why well, would they? Well, we we, we got we to gotta do this last bit here. I came across this song here All today right. by this band I'd never heard of called The Main Squeeze. And, oh, nice. uh, yeah, yeah. And they're, and they're covered in a little Zep tune, so um, check it out. Yeah. All right. All righty. Yep. Baroop. Oh, Black Betty there. Christopher Amoroso. Uh, yeah, great stuff, great stuff. And uh, before that, we had the band called The Main Squeeze, covering Led Zeppelin's No Aquata. Uh, which, uh, excellent, excellent cover version, man, I tell you, man. Uh, anyway, they got a bunch of other covers up there, too. Uh, the Main Squeeze, if you look on the YouTube, you'll find a bunch. Yep, -er. So, check them out. Um, that'll wrap it up. Uh, we, we got a bunch of shows over the weekend and, uh, next week and all the usual stuff. Grammy will be back on Wednesday. She was not in today. Little family thing going on. Yeah, that but happens, you know. Life it, is life. It, it does, it does. Especially for those family type folk. You know it. <laughs> uh, yep. anyway, uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. Check the schedule on our, on yeah. our RLM there, reallibertymedia.com. For all the shows, and um, I will be back next week. Moose Girl will not. No, I will not. I will be going to a concert, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Absolutely. Have a great weekend. Do that. And uh, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Which isn't much. <laughs> Peace. Peace. <laughs>